Just over one year ago now, I took delivery of my Rivian R1T. Since Rivian is and was such a new company at the time, I didn't quite know what to expect. I was excited since reviews of this car were great, but I was also taking delivery of a VIN just under 11,000. In the last 13 months, we've done a lot with this truck. Some days it's just a simple drive, other days we haul some cargo and fill it to the brim, and other days we attempt a road trip. Overall, it's a fantastic vehicle. It's super practical and all the fancy features it brings are useful, but there are plenty of things to keep in mind when buying the R1T. For some, they may be deal breakers. Today, I'm going to break down my full experience with the R1T in the last year, talk about everything I love, everything I hate, and what I'm excited for in the future, so let's get into it. First off, let's break down the exact truck I purchased. It's the R1T Adventure Package Trim, quad motor all-wheel drive, black mountain interior, large pack battery with forest green paint and 20-inch all-terrain bright wheels. These are large wheels meant for off-roading that we have really only used like twice, so I'm not sure the range reduction of around 60 miles actually proved our best move here. Still, they look great, but for the average driver, the stock wheels with the best EPA range number might be the best option. More on that and charging later. Today, Rivian has changed a lot. There was a price increase on this truck, and they've introduced their own dual motor all-wheel drive powertrain. This is made in-house by Rivian, and according to most people testing it, they've found that it makes the quad motor system seem like overkill. It also enables you to choose between three battery sizes. The standard pack gets a 270 mile EPA range, and the max pack increases the range to 400 miles with stock wheels. For me, I love the look of this truck. When I see one rolling down the freeway in either direction, I think it stands out in a beautiful way. The front and rear light bars are a great touch and it's definitely a compact truck. For this review, instead of an overview and then sections on the good and bad, I'll just break down every part of this car with its features and give my experience with them as we go. As can tend to happen with a review in this style, I'll be zeroing in on the issues I have with aspects of this truck so that people get a realistic picture. Sometimes it can be off balance for me to be pointing out issues and then talk about how much I love this truck. That's mainly because it's just not too useful for me to repeatedly say this part of the truck is great over and over and over for everything else that's fine. So as we go here, keep that in mind. On the R1T, you have four normal doors, and then the rest of the truck adds a lot because it's designed from the ground up to be electric. Already with the doors, I have one small issue. Not a single person that rides in the passenger seat is capable of closing it hard enough on the first try. This is something I'll follow up with service about because it's everybody, and it requires almost a slam. On top of this, anytime it rains, water gets completely stored in these doors. This is common, but the Rivian drain plug seems to be plugged, so they just don't work. For the next day or two after heavy rain, you can hear water sloshing around back and forth inside the truck as you speed up or slow down. Here's a clip of that. Many have this issue and it should be fine if you drain it, but still. The front trunk is massive, opens and closes electronically, and has a really convenient shelf that you can lift up and place out of the way when not needed. It holds there with magnets. The charge port is on the left front of this truck, meaning that's the direction you need to park this car to charge. Then there are two gear tunnel doors leading to this extra space that almost doesn't fully make sense. It can come in extremely handy though for specific cargo, and it's accessible from the interior as well. One issue I've had here is that they release fine, but if I try to release them from the screen, they always partially release. Then I have to go close them and reopen them with the button on the outside of the truck. I just default to this button now, but it's a weird bug. These gear tunnel doors are particularly useful for getting into the truck bed, but I am still nearly at the point of petitioning Rivian to change this design. The door has such a sharp corner on it that when you're getting out of the bed, it could be an incredibly easy way to destroy your leg. If they just rounded off this edge, problem solved. The truck bed itself is four and a half feet and includes a huge sub bed area capable of fitting a full size spare. One complaint here is that this storage area can stick pretty badly. Sometimes I unlatch it and then I really have to put in some muscle in an awkward way with my fingers to actually get it open. Also in the bed are outlets and an air compressor with a hose that can reach all of the tires. Then my R1T has a powered tonneau cover. Shortly after taking delivery of mine, Rivian fully discontinued this cover because it was so bad. It broke on so many customers, and for me, it's always a little scary to use. It's a big complaint, but if you're buying new, it won't matter. It's not an option, or it will be with a totally redesigned version in 2024. Mine will get stuck a few inches open periodically, and it's always a funny thing when showing people this truck. Oh wow, can I check out your truck? Yeah!
I'm expecting that Rivian will replace this with the new one next year. With the bed open though, it's a fully functional truck and we've definitely made use of this. We've picked up furniture, furniture from Ikea, landscaping things, and I've helped people move among other things. To get inside, the Rivian's handles pop out on approach with the key fob or phone app, and this works with mixed reliability. It always seems to be the time that I approach the car with my hands full that the door handles just don't open and I have to fully reach into my pocket and pull out my phone. This has gotten better throughout ownership, but it's still not perfect even though I always keep the app running in the background. I'd say my Model Y gets this right about 90% of the time, and the Rivian about 60%. Those are educated guesses. Up front, the R1T has a beautiful interior. It's a mix of faux leather and dark wood accents. They have other options now, but it seems like this interior is going to be the standard one going forward. They definitely took a lot of inspiration from Tesla, with minimal buttons on the steering wheel and then two screens. The gauge cluster is beautiful and works really well, and the center screen does as well. There you have maps, climate controls, music, drive mode settings, cameras, and more. One great thing about Rivian is that like Tesla, they push regular software updates. Some brands promise software updates and then they come once in a blue moon, but Rivian is regularly bringing out updates with truly useful features. This car continues getting better from an interface perspective, but also a drive perspective. A recent update just improved ride comfort on my truck. There are two stocks, buttons and scroll wheels on the steering wheel, window buttons, and that's most of what you interface with off the screen. The window buttons are actually not the best. They feel a bit cheap and then hardly ever work as I expect. I also had an issue the other day where the window wouldn't roll all the way back up. This happened on the freeway and I didn't want to make the wind noise worse, so once I got off the freeway, I rolled it all the way down and then rolled it all the way back up with no problem. The seats are comfortable, heated, and ventilated. The center console is pretty deep and useful with cup holders that slide in and out, but there are two complaints I have there. One, this is an ice box. The AC traveling through this to rear passengers seems to leak quite a bit because whatever you put in there gets very cold if the AC is on. Then the wireless charger is a joke. It looks great, but then you place your phone there, drive for a couple minutes, and it slides right out of place. I replaced this with a specifically designed MagSafe charger, and I recommend every Rivian customer do this. Rivian's own wireless charger is one of those, how did this make it to production kind of designs. It's just pretty useless. For storage, there is no glove box, so you'll have the center console, the tiny compartments under each front seat, or the door pockets that are expandable. In back, there are three seats with the center seat turning into an armrest as needed. There's a small screen for climate controls, USB-C ports near that screen and on the back of each headrest, seat back pockets, and then one of the best things in this truck, the glass roof. From the back, this provides a great view and it improves headroom for all passengers. There are also hooks on the backs of the front seats, handles for every seat and door pockets. All around, I've been using the Rivian all-weather floor mats, but a weird complaint here is that they actually smell a lot like a factory. It took around a month for the smell to dissipate, and they still have that smell. That, among many other advantages, has led me to switch to different floor mats, which I'll detail in a future accessories video. All around the truck, there are speakers for the sound system. I bought when this still had the Meridian sound system, and it's all right. I honestly prefer my Model Y sound system to this from a clarity perspective, but Rivian now ships this with their own in-house made system. This could mean that it has actually gotten better since they can dial it in with software over time and have complete control. Those are the main parts of the truck inside and out. Especially for a first vehicle from a new EV startup, it's built incredibly well. When I get in, it just feels like a very nice truck, and it definitely is. The materials are well-crafted, and it's put together well. When driving on the freeway, though, that's when you'll notice wind noise. Wind noise is a lot. The cabin itself is extremely quiet. When I honk the horn, I almost don't even know that I honked because it does such a great job isolating there, but wind absolutely gets into the seams. Brand new manufacturer, so it makes sense, and overall it's great, but that ends up being quite a lot on the freeway. Here's a clip. One of the biggest pieces of the R1T is the screen. It handles most of what you do, so let's dive in there. The UI and overall responsiveness of the R1T screen are fantastic. It's easily one of the best out there, and I'd put it second to Tesla. It also keeps improving in all of the ways you want it to be. It was annoying to not be able to customize the dock, so Rivian fixed that. It only had Spotify, now it has Tidal. It didn't have dash cam, now it does. There are tons of things like this that Rivian has fixed after customer feedback, and it's a great part about the software approach. For maps, I had some big issues here, but this has actually improved a lot as well. Rivian's maps 
are built off of Mapbox, so it doesn't use the best or most accurate traffic data, and sometimes routes are abnormal. My bugs of the car randomly jumping forward or it recalculating at random times have been fixed though. At this point though, if it's a long, important drive on a tight timeline, I do pull out my phone with Google Maps to compare, but usually default to Rivian's maps. While the overall experience here is great, certain software things are randomly extremely slow. Sometimes you open something up like drive modes for the first time since driving, and it takes a full five seconds or so to load up. When you're driving, engaging with the screen, and want to change something like this, this kind of startup time is pretty unacceptable, and it just doesn't match the rest of the screen experience at all. I think this could be a software update fix. For climate controls, these are pretty intuitive and they save to your profile, so I hardly adjust them, but the connection between where you drag events airflow and where it actually flows always seems a bit questionable. It is nice to be able to adjust each vent individually from one spot though. One feature I want Rivian to add here though is a simple climate keeper mode. They have this function, but it's pet comfort mode. You turn this on to keep the climate the same when you go into the store real quick. However, if you don't have a pet that you're keeping in your car like me, you just have to keep this imaginary pet comfortable. So people who walk by my truck in this mode see that my pet is safe and comfortable since this is the only climate keeper mode. One other big part of your experience with the R1T will be the phone app. I use this as my main key and then engage with it for preconditioning, charging info, or seeing the latest software version. This app has improved a lot and it's great to customize the temperature in preconditioning now or the charge percentage, but it still could use a lot more functionality. Comparing it to something like the Tesla app, there's a lot that this app cannot do. But most important of all, how does this truck drive? It's awesome. This is a very well engineered and very well made EV. No truck can beat its speed. The zero to 60 in three seconds is pretty unfathomable. It handles great and has a ton of versatility with all the different drive modes. Raising and lowering suspension is quite useful and it particularly helps with driving comfort and then getting in or out easier thanks to kneel mode. I love to drive this truck and Rivian has done a great job with regen braking in particular. Overall, it's a joy to drive in a very smooth ride. Visibility is also great thanks to the overhead 360 camera that you can bring up at any time. When you don't want to fully handle driving though, Rivian has their driver assistance system called Driver Plus. This system is pretty good. On a long road trip with well-marked roads, it will do a good job and take a lot of the stress off of you. You have to be there ready to take over and nudge the wheel to prove that, but it does a great job braking and accelerating. I'd still take Tesla Autopilot over this from a functionality standpoint and reliability, but the Rivian is much more reasonable and smooth when slowing down and speeding up. That said, the system does have a few big flaws. One is that the roads have to be pre-mapped, so it isn't available everywhere. As such, the system will just cut out at the drop of a hat. It alerts you when it's happening, but there's basically no warning ahead of time. When it has a problem, it just disengages. One time I was on the freeway and it was on a curve and it said, take over immediately, and then disengaged at that exact moment. All of a sudden I was driving straight toward a wall. There needs to be a far better warning system here. And again, this is something Rivian might be fixing right now in software. Quote, Driver Plus now generates a preemptive warning when a reduction in lane line visibility prevents highway assist from sustaining performance. Another complaint here is that it always defaults to your current speed when initiating Driver Plus. So if you plan to stay in this system for a while and traffic will speed up, you have to scroll the speed each time you engage. Again though, this has been fixed in the latest update, allowing you to choose between speed limit or current speed. This looks a lot like Tesla Autopilot on screen, but it's a bit more of a system to use once you know you'll be in your clearly marked lane for a while and there isn't too much going on around you. What's cool though, is that it can get much better over time with software. There are other weird quirks to this car like certain warnings that you don't quite know what to do with. For one, if you shift into reverse at too high of a speed, it will pop up to tell you to slow down before shifting, even though it shifted just fine. In my opinion, why don't they just lower the speed where I'm allowed to shift so that I can't even do that? Another one that randomly pops up is some form of your truck is raising wait before driving to prevent damage. Usually this happens after I've been in the car for a little bit or I've already been driving. What is this damage and why is this happening? Warnings like these are things that just make you question what's actually going on and things that I think Rivian could design around. Then I park on a slight incline each night. Randomly, when I go to back down my driveway, the car just suddenly freaks out and fully shifts into park as I'm going down the hill. It's jarring and I have no idea why it happens. I've probably had this happen three times over the last year. Then I just shift back into reverse and resume. 
It almost feels like I got in and drove too quickly, and the car thought it was rolling, so it just went into park to be safe. Again, just don't let me drive yet if the system isn't ready for me to drive. Of course, this all sounds like a lot, because it's a lot to explain, and it's much harder to talk a long time about how the rest of the time driving is great. So please keep that in mind. I overall love this truck and love driving it, but there are these issues at hand that I experience periodically. The thing is that none of this matters if you can't charge your truck, and the Rivian is currently subject to third-party charging. We did a road trip in the R1T up to Northern California a few months ago, and it was a pretty terrible experience. The driving was fun and comfortable, but the charging was a nightmare. We have literally not driven this car past its range since that trip, and just charge at home instead. As a whole, because of this issue, this truck is actually not something I recommend if you plan to drive distances. It's just stressful to be at the mercy of third-party charging networks that are unreliable, slow, broken down, or crowded. It sucks, but it is the reality right now. And if that wasn't going to change, I would tell you this is not a truck to buy. Luckily, this is changing. Rivian is opening their own chargers, and they are expanding in useful areas. Their chargers seem to be fairly reliable, and then in 2024, they're partnering with Tesla to allow Rivians to charge at 12,000 plus superchargers. That will immediately make this car far more practical, and should make road trips a reliable blast as they should be in this car. The last thing to consider with Rivian is that they are still a very new company. They are yet to be profitable and have a long road ahead. They are making great progress, but as an owner, part of the difficulty early on comes with service. For me, at my Rivian delivery appointment, there were a couple small issues like a panel misalignment under the truck, a small scratch, and other things. I was told to just book a service appointment for that, but what I didn't think about is the fact that service is 50 miles away from me. On top of that, service is booked. Right now, I'm trying to book service for a few issues like the water sloshing, window issues, and other things I talked about in this video, but it's currently September and I can't book an appointment until November. If something needed fixing immediately, there would be a lot of frustration there. And it's similar to what it was like buying a Tesla even just a couple years ago. It's booked for two months and over an hour away from my house. Luckily so far, there hasn't been any maintenance for me, and mobile service is coming to my house to fix the seatbelt recall from a few months ago. So when there's a recall or something mandatory like that, it does seem that mobile service can do it and bring it to you. Sometime in November, I'll be heading to service for some of the issues I talked about in this video. Shifting back to my overall experience with this truck in the past year though, it has been great. Rivian has done a great job with this product, and I'm particularly excited to see what's coming up soon for their R2 platform. To check out that video, you can click the link up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.